Hello, Al Pals. This is Big Al. Welcome to Big Al Presents the first annual Biggies, Al's Best of 2021. That's right. I am at the heights of megalomania creating my own award and awards show. The best in film and series in the past year course to qualify to win I had to have seen it so if I didn't see it it was not up for consideration I'm going to start with the films of the year in various categories followed by series and ending with the best of 2021 in both categories so without further ado let's have a little fun and get started and see who the winners of the biggies are this year. Starting with the best film biggies. Best film action adventure goes to Godzilla versus Kong. That's right, the iconic monsters meeting up and doing battle was a fantastic film with excellent special effects i loved this movie and when you can create a giant ape and have him be so charismatic of a character you are doing something right so godzilla versus kong gets my biggie for action adventure Best film comedy goes to Free Guy. That's right. Ryan Reynolds has the kind of humor that I appreciate. And I love this movie. It is incredibly fun. And I laughed the whole way through. If you haven't seen it, I really hope you give a chance. It, give it a chance. And if you do watch it. I really hope you loved it as much as I did. Just a, hilar a, a hilarious film. The biggie for best film drama goes to Language Lessons. That's right, a small little independent film directed by Natalie Morales, who also stars in it and stars with Mark Duplass. This was a very heartfelt film where you see the development of a beautiful relationship between two people entirely over video chat. Just a wonderfully touching film, I thought, and just wonderfully acted by the by the two by um mark duplass and natalie morales it's not the kind of film for everybody but i watched it and it just hit the right chords for me best film horror goes to the night house starring rebecca hall who gave a brilliant performance in this psychological thriller. It was an excellent film and her performance was just so dynamic and just leaves you unsettled. At, at the end, and they, that's exactly what it wanted to do. Just a great film. I know a lot of people might have thought Halloween Kills, but uh, I didn't think Halloween Kills was all that great. Now, The Night House is the kind of film I like. Dark, there's a little bit of a slow burn, but just tackles your psyche and the uh, 
just a wonderful film. And of course, Rebecca Hall, the second film uh, in the biggies this year that she was in because she was also in Godzilla vs. Kong. So Rebecca Hall, an actress to keep an eye out. Best film science fiction goes to Dune. That's right. I know a lot of people who may have heard my review may not think I liked it, and I did. And I know I got a lot of people gave me grief because I only gave it three and a half stars out of five. That is because of my attachment to the source material. But if you just take it as it is, Dune is a beautifully filmed motion picture with dynamic special effects, great characterizations, uh, the acting was spot on throughout the entire production. I just wish they'd ended it at a different place. And there were a few changes that they made that I didn't quite appreciate. And like I said, it's because of my fondness for the source material that I was hard on it, but it was the best science fiction film of the past year. And now we're on to the best series, biggies, starting with best series, action adventure, and the biggie goes to Hawkeye from Marvel Studios as seen on Disney Plus, a truly exceptional series in the truest sense of the words because the other Disney series have been dropping the ball in the last episode or two. And Hawkeye became the exception because it delivered outstanding episodes from beginning to end with perfect action sequences and the return of the wonderful Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin, just a stellar series, uh, I thought. And I know a lot of people don't like the Marvel Universe anymore, and that is perfectly fine, but Hawkeye was wonderful. Best series, comedy. Maybe a little dark horse on this one. Ghosts on CBS. As truly hilarious series about a couple who gets a manor house in New England and finds that it is brimming with ghosts that only she can see because of a near-death experience she had. And the, the ghosts are quite a collection of characters, just a well-written series, and just a good old-fashioned fun sitcom that I've really, really come to enjoy this year. Best series drama goes to Heels, as seen on the Stars Network, Heels stars Stephen Mell as a wrestler who is running a promotion that his father started. His father uh, sadly killed himself a year before from the growing pressure of trying to run the wrestling promotion, and his son is trying to keep his father's legacy alive, and of course, butting heads with his brother and causing tension with his family. It is a tense drama. And if you do like wrestling, it's this could be your thing if you haven't seen it. It's a wonderful series. I really enjoyed it. Best series horror. CBS's Evil is one of the most 
well-written, brilliantly acted shows on the air, or in this case, streaming on Paramount+. Plus. The first season of Evil was on CBS, but it has since gone to Paramount+, Plus, where they have been given the opportunity to up the their game, showing a little bit more gore, uh, a little bit more unsettling imagery and storylines, and uh, yeah, maybe a little uh, bare flesh here and there, but it, it is just simply a magnificent show, especially Katya Herbert's performance in, well, all throughout the series, all the actors are are doing um, just superb job, but Katya Herber's performance in the season finale is so poignant. It's a confession scene, and she reaches into the depths of her soul to deliver the performance of the year. And if she doesn't get nominated for an Emmy, if not win the Emmy, then the Emmy makes no sense anymore. That is why I'm having the biggies. <laughs> because someone needs to do a award show with a little bit, a uh, little bit of class, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm not full of myself. But yes, a best series horror goes to evil. If you are slightly uh, adverse to a show kind of dealing with the Christian faith, it can be a bit, uh, yeah, it might not be for everybody. I'm just going to say that. And the best series, science fiction, it's a tie, folks, because I could not decide between the two. I weighed them against each other, and they just were too equal in my own mind. The first, Lost in Space, Season 3, the epic conclusion of the Lost in Space saga as seen on Netflix. I know not everyone likes reimaginings or reboots or whatever term you want to use for a series like this, but whatever it was, it was well done and very satisfying the way it ended the way it ended. If they do do more of them, I really hope they don't because I just think they wrapped it up in a nice little bow. So the the first biggie for sci-fi goes to Lost in Space 3. The second goes to Another Life, also on Netflix, starring Katie Sackhoff. Excellently written, great storytelling, and just uh, beautiful effects. It, it just was a very imaginative show. And I uh, I really hope more people eventually get around to seeing it because you never heard a lot of people talking about it and maybe a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was fantastic. Well, folks, now we come to the epic conclusion what are the best of 2021 in series and in film? I'm starting with series because like most award shows, they always give best film at the end. Then I'm going to do the same thing, sort of, because I've got one little extra thing after that. The best series of 2021. Anybody knows me may know what it is. It is Cobra Kai season four. That is right. It snuck in under the wire on the very last day of the year. And I watched every single 
episode on the last day of the year because I just couldn't help myself. It was that good. I have loved this series and I was salivating to see season four and now of course the wait for season five sadly but uh, just, I, the show has it all it has wonderful humor drama action it hits nostalgia the way nostalgia should be done and it has some great messages just for life and it uh, you know good versus evil just wonderful and um, if anyone out there has not seen Cobra Kai and like the original Karate Kid films I think you're really gonna like this show and if you don't I'm sorry but I, I love this I love this series and it did sneak in just at the tail end of the year and full confession if this didn't win evil would have won and I would have had to rejigger a few of uh, a few of my a few of the, the categories but that's okay Cobra Kai came in and just blew everything away now folks the big award the best film of 20 21 if you haven't guessed it i'll be shocked ghostbusters afterlife was there any other choice for best film this past year i could not think of it this film was first of all a poignant tribute to harold ramus it was in itself fit perfectly into the real Ghostbusters universe not that piece of garbage that came out in 2016 and I don't care how many people whine and moan about oh it wasn't that bad yes it was so deal with it 2016 can be wiped from our memories this one was the absolute wonderful palate cleanser cleanser it honored those original characters and brought to us the film that Ghostbusters fans have been wanting and had deserved and I must thank Jason Reitman for showing that some filmmakers know how to do it right and are able to give the fans exactly what they not only want but what they need and i'm not going to end there folks i do have one more page i do want to talk about here honorable mentions i just can't leave it alone there were of course a few other things that came so close to getting a biggie this year and I really wanted to mention them and give them the pat on the back for just bringing me some great entertainment this year sex education on Netflix a brilliantly written series yes it's woke as all get out but thankfully I have a superhuman ability to filter all that out and ignore it thank God the Witcher I thought it was a great fantasy series and I know a lot of people who are fans of the books and the video game may have a different view that's fine I've never seen or read any of the source materials but the show to me just pure fantasy entertainment uh, some of the films that I really like this year don't look up a great satire on just how stupid human beings can be when uh, even the world is about to end and how obsessed we can be with media and celebrity 
and getting lost in that media and celebrity, even though you do know something's about to crash in, into the earth. Uh, kind of a, you know, hit or miss with a lot of people, but it was a hit with me. Gunpowder Milkshake, a definite girl power film, but it was a lot of fun. Karen Gillan uh, starred in that one. Chris Pratt in The Tomorrow War, a great sci-fi alien, inv alien invasion action film. Disney's Jungle Cruise starring The Rock and um, Emily Blunt. And it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a rehash of Pirates of the Caribbean, but it was fun. Uh, but I just had a great time. And hey, even my mother liked it. So I, ha I have to give it, I have to give it uh, a little bit of, uh, of uh, some credit there. Uh, and The Rock, of course, also in Red Notice. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good film. It's a great little heist film, a buddy film. The characters just have wonderful chemistry together. So yes, that are, these are my honorable mentions for the year. And I hope everyone enjoyed my humble little awards show style of talking about the things that I really enjoyed in 2021. I hope everyone who is listening and watching this has subscribed to my channel, Big Al Presents. Of course, I'll be doing more reviews, rewatches, and rambles in the weeks and months to come. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it around. Maybe someone will see something that they haven't seen, or maybe I can push them into giving something a chance. I hope everyone had a wonderful new year. 2022 is upon us, and I hope that this year brings you wonderful entertainment. And this is Big Al saying, until next time, take care. Goodbye.